Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a fascinating book which has come to us from uh, publishers uh, Walters Kluwer and Kluwer Law International. The title of the book is an interesting one. It's Transnational Labour Law, which is the title, and it's been written by Antonio Ojeda Aviles. Uh, again, I hope I pronounced the uh, name correctly. This is part of the Law and Business series of Studies in Employment and Social Policy from uh, Walters Kluwer. And Elizabeth and I have given our review title the following. New Perspectives on Transnational Labour Law, a Detailed Examination. Let's just have a look at the book first. It's a hardback, you see, nice strong cover at the front. There's the spine and then there's quite a lot of stuff at the back which you can see, basically talking about the book and what the contents are um, and going into some detail. You'll find all of that information freely on the, the web and um, certainly partly in some of the reviews. The book itself is structured in an interesting way. It is a, effectively a continental book, so you've got a particular way of doing things. The actual uh, index is at, at the back, but what you've got is the list right at the back of the actual co um, various books in this series of works. It's called The Studies in Employment and Social Policy. And then before that is the actual index itself. You can see that there. The book runs to just over 300 pages. And then before that you then get to a relatively small bibliography there. I'm going backwards at the moment with this, but you can see the bibliography then we get to the actual various chapters, apart from being a chapter there. Let me show you the front of the book. There are no footnotes, but there is paragraph numbering, which you can see at the sides there, which is useful for the index itself, because the index actually goes in terms of page numbers, but the paragraph numbering is also something that you can find things quite easily with. Now, this is the list of studies in employment and social policy, the various this is one of the volumes, and that, that tells you a little bit about what the studies are about. And this is volume 46. The Transnational Labour Law is the, the title. As I said, it's been written by Antonio Ojeda Aviles. The series editors are three professors who are listed there. Professors Neil, Weiss and Nystrom. Um, now, the table of contents you can see here structured in a particular way. And we'll run through those, chapter 1. There's other chapters going through, going up to there, and then we come to the end here with chapter 11, the fi final one there. Then there's a forward, which is always worth um, looking at. Starts off, we live and work in a world where the economy and labour relations are dominated by multinational corporations and financial institutions, often more powerful than nation states. Well, that's a fairly bold statement to start it off, but you see what the point is. That's Bob Heppel's uh, main statement as Professor Emeritus from Clare College, Cambridge. There's a preface which is well worth reading in addition. That's from the, um, the author who is in Punta Paginas. Then there's a nice list of abbreviations, always very helpful with this sort of uh, work. Then a list of case studies to give examples of uh, some of the problems, some very interesting ones. Then the making of an approach is the start of labour law and transnational scope of application. Now, what's this book about? Let's just look at it in a bit more detail because the title of the book could be a bit confusing to some people. Lawyers and scholars, we feel, who are involved in the study and analysis of labour law in general, sometimes referred to as trades union law or employment law in the United Kingdom, we'll find this detailed analysis of what is called transnational labour law nothing if not interesting. And the reason for that is a very simple one. We are in a global economy, and you've heard, certainly from Bob Heppel, what the point, point of view is about the size and, and power of some of the big multinational organisations in relation to some of the smaller nation states that we have. So you can see the importance of knowing what labour law is about on a transnational, in other words, across the nations, uh, basis. Transnational, by the way, is not synonymous with international. 
there's a difference in our view. Transnational, as the author explains, implies a horizontal perspective across world institutions, sometimes quite different from international as a synonym for interstate. Whoops, one can get lost here, of course, immediately, because in the American context, or even within the European Union, the word state can mean something quite different again. But because it's got the word trance in, I would tend to, if you can imagine it, tend to think of it as across national boundaries uh, and labour law. Because today we have a global marketplace, a global workplace, and therefore, for instance, even in the United Kingdom, you've got a very large number of people who come here from other countries. So it depends very much on what they're used to concerning labour relations, as it used to be called. Whatever the terms are, it's about the structure of the law concerning the workforce. However, with some of the stuff I've been saying, it's a bit of a minor quibble, because the core matter on which the author means to focus is what he terms the new leading role played by multinational companies, as powerful as governments themselves sometimes, or even more so, and the new formulas of private regulation of economic and production relations. Uh, relations. Writing in the Ford, as I've indicated, Professor Bob Heppel, uh, Queen's Counsel, Emeritus Professor of Law at Cambridge at Clare, also makes the point that in his view, the economy and labour relations area dominated by multinational corporations and financial institutions, often more powerful than nation states, actually is one of the issues. And he kicks off with that, which is why I've laid emphasis on it in the review. Um, Heppel goes on to add that with such concentrations of capital, companies can generally shift their activities across national frontiers to locations where they find regulation less burdensome, and labour costs too, one could add. And of course that's reflected in the United Kingdom with some of the problems we have with imports, goods that are imported, uh, and the working conditions of the countries where those goods have come from. And obviously that is a very major concern to a very large number of the uh, buying public. Uh, the point also, of course, is put forward that trade union movements face many legal and practical difficulties in organising cross-border solidarity against the power of a globalised uh, capital. And that again is an issue which is um, to the forefront. I'm recording this review after the general election in May 2015 with a Conservative government in power in the United Kingdom and some changes to employment legislation. So we are looking at the moment to uh, see some quite substantial changes in what could be happening both nationally and perhaps within the international field <clears throat> with the European Union referendum and the repeal or amending of the Human Rights Act. Let me get back to the book. It's been published recently, as I say, by Walters Kluwer and is virtually unique in that it considers the mix of public and private regulation within both international and regional as well as national legal landscapes. Transnational, in other words, to get back to the word again, um, refers to rules that, whatever their origin, cross national boundaries. So it's the word across is probably the, the best analogy. In explaining these processes, the author subjects such labour issues as conflict of laws, collective bargaining and corporate responsibility to thorough and often minute analysis. Curiously, corporate responsibility is described as a new concept when in the recollection of most it has been around for more than a generation, discussed at length for example in the Harvard Business Review. Um, possibly a Jade Raviles is referring to the length of time it's taken for such a concept to be more or less universally accepted. He does however provide ample clarification of this point in the book's final chapter. Let me conclude by saying that in all, we think that the book offers some startling unusual and unusual perspectives on labour and employment law and practice, including, of course, transnational labour arbitration, not to mention the settlement of labour disputes in or out of court. Lawyers, government officials and policymakers, as well as academics and employment law advisers, 
we'll find this book, we think, thoughtful, thorough and singularly enlightening. And I think it's certainly a good read for anybody who has uh, a very substantial interest in this area of law. Certainly trade unionists should read it, I think, and anybody involved in labour law as barristers or solicitors. There's the book, it's a hardback. There's the other side. Just opening it up in the middle. Transnational Rules on Employment Relations. There we go. You see, there's a huge amount of information there. Some interesting boxed sections, which are the case studies. I didn't really go into much on that, but let me just go back to the front and just remind you that right at the beginning, you do have some case studies that are listed uh, actually here. And you can see those listed there. And they are to try to give some perspective in really perhaps in, in, in terms of a practical objective as to what is actually uh, going on at the moment in the workplace. There we go, Tra chapter four, transnational rules on employment relations again. You see that the whole thing, that's health and safety at work, which is covered there. And then right at the back, just to remind you, you've got uh, quite a good index. It's not a big index, but it's, it's good enough. And you've also got of course, a lot of bibliographical information. Well, thank you very much to uh, Antonio Agida Aviles and to Walters Kluwer. I thought it's a fascinating book as a person who's been a member of a trade union and uh, at, at sort of branch and area level, it's certainly worth, worth uh, reading. Thank you very much for, to all concerned for producing it. Bye-bye.